sex talk. Derek and Miley, cause sexuality is tough. And okay, sex just isn't good enough. No, sex talk with Derek and Miley. Hello, folks. Welcome to Sex Talk with Erica Miley. Erica Miley here. I'm sorry I sound a little froggy. I guess that's a good explanation to the sound of my voice. I've been getting over a cold, so luckily I'm on the tail end. (laughs) So 40th episode. Holy cow. Holy crap. 2019. Here we are. Happy New Year. Here's to 2019. Here's to all of those New New Year's resolutions that you all are making. I hope, I hope, I hope that you all are making intentions and forgiving yourself when and if they don't work out, because that happens to all of us. We we all deal with that in some way, shape, or form. So this episode, I really wanted to talk about something pretty cool that Pornhub does every year. Pornhub's a website for pornography. It is incredibly popular <laughs> for those of you who have never seen it. Every year, Pornhub does a year in review of the data that they collect of the user of its site. Here's the deal. Big surprise. They collect your data, folks. (laughs) Pretty much like every other website on the internet today. The interesting thing, though, is that they have some pretty crazy findings in the statistics that they reveal. And what they indicate about our porn use, but also like what they indicate about our sexual fantasies as a whole. So I wanted to use this episode as like just a reminder that guess what? Pornography is incredibly popular, one. Two, that, again, I want to break down some of the shame around the use of pornography. And I want to (laughs) let you all know that we're all watching very similar things. So this is the sixth year that they have done this review. And it is a complete recap of the trends in tech and the types of porn that folks are looking at throughout their website. So they, they keep track of those things, like what people are searching and they they actually make a giant infograph which is really interesting so if you're interested in actually seeing this for yourself it is pornhub.com forward slash insights forward slash 2018 a year in review and if you just search pornhub year in review it comes right up and there's actually no porn on this website so you can actually view it without being worried that you know oh gosh there's going to be porn right in my face when I try to read this no there's actually no porn on it so you can actually look at it without any kind of worries. The year in numbers is pretty impressively, (laughs) like all of the numbers that go across the entire year is is (laughs) mind-boggling. The visits to Pornhub totaled, totaled, so all of them, 33.5 billion over the course of 2018. I'm going to say that again, 33.5 billion which is an increase of 5 billion visits over the previous year in 2017. <laughs> they say that it equates to the daily average of 92 million visitors. And at the time of this writing, Pornhub's daily visits now exceed 100 million. That's crazy. That's so big. That's so many people. It's so many searches, so many views. That I, I mean, they, and the other thing that they do on this website is they break it down by time, which is... Eh, for better or for worse, it might make you feel bad or it might make make you feel like more at ease because we're all doing it. So basically, they say that 33.5 billion visits to Pornhub, 92 million daily average visits, and the which equal the populations of Canada, Poland, and Australia every day. <laughs> I just, this blows me away. Every year I read it, it blows me away. And I'm like, oh, it just brings us all in the world together. We're all watching porn together. <laughs> They also give a comparison to like break it down so that you can kind of visualize how many like years or days this actually equals. And it basically equates to 1 million hours of video or 115 years of video. (laughs) So that's like the span of time from 1903 to 2018, which is an incredible amount of video. So they also break it down per second, per hour, and per day. And I'm probably going to screw this up, but 147 gigabytes per second, 529,200 gigabytes per hour. 
That's just an insane amount. I mean, just based on based on all of those numbers, it's more bandwidth than the entire internet consumed in 2002. 2002 wasn't that long ago, folks. <laughs> we are actually using as much pornography as there was in the bandwidth of the internet all together in 2002. <laughs> so I just think it's a really interesting way to kind of look at the landscape of pornography and look at it in a very a data perspective. So to kind of touch on some of these, there's a lot of data here. There's a lot of things that they talk about as far as trends. But I think it's really interesting when they show the top searches because I think this actually shows some. It shows us something important. I think it shows us the things that we're more interested in now and the things that we're more interested in sexual and tend to be interested in sexually. So the searches that really defined 2018, number one was Stormy Daniels. So if those of you who maybe... Maybe we'll, maybe you've lived in a, under a rock this year, but I, I, d- I highly doubt it. You're familiar with Stormy Daniels. That she she is a well known porn star. She was a well known porn star even before 2018. But the searches went up because of her involvement with Donald Trump. So many people, I imagine, are looking up her porn videos that she's done in the past and are curious about who this person is. And one of the ways that people get curious about other people is, especially if they're known for pornography as they search Pornhub for them. (laughs) So that was the number one search of the year. The second search of the year was Fortnite. The third search was 4K. So that's like video quality, which I think is really interesting that that's something that's changed over time for us as a whole, is that we're actually searching for the quality of the video in our pornography. (laughs) The fifth most popular is trans. I hope that that tends to be a positive thing because then that means Maybe people are being more honest about the things that arouse them. And that means they're also being more honest that gender isn't necessarily one way. It's not one thing in particular, that it is a spectrum and that we're attracted as people. We're attracted to all sorts of people of different gender identities. Number six is outdoor. So outdoor porn. People having sex outside. I think that's really interesting. Number seven is tattoos. Number eight is Tinder. So Tinder has officially made it into our pornography. (laughs) We are actually looking for maybe a storyline that involves Tinder or that people met on Tinder, whatever the case may be. The number nine one is kind of interesting to me. Bowsette. And number 10 is threesome. We'll get to number 10 in a second. But number nine is interesting to me is that it's there's apparently a popularity in Bowser and Bowsette porn. If you're not familiar with who Bowser and Bowsette are, they're from the Mario games, Nintendo games. I enjoy Nintendo very much. And I don't know why it didn't ever occur to me that people would be interested in porn with Bowser in it. But, you know, there's lots of people who are interested in more animated porn. Now to number 10. Number 10 is threesome. This is an incredibly common fantasy. Threesome, so group sex, is actually the most common fantasy we have as people generally. Dr. Justin Lee Miller, and I I know I've mentioned him on the podcast before, did a wonderful study about our sexual fantasies, and he found that this is the most popular group sex, is the most popular form of fantasy across gender identity. It can be a threesome, but it basically the idea is that more than two people are involved in the sexual activity. So it's interesting to see that, of course, that our our most popular version of sex or sexual fantasy shows up in the porn that we're watching. So going back to what the number three version, the 4K, most popular searches. They were saying that in 2017, 1080p searches were the most popular. So as technology grows and changes, our search for the clearest video, (laughs) Ultra HD, it's basically seen this significant increase in popularity throughout 2018. The other piece that I think is interesting and and a really interesting piece to talk about is the quote-unquote romantic videos. The search for them have more than doubled. Romantic videos oftentimes have a longer lead up, they have a stronger storyline, or they actually just feature less intercourse and more romance before the intercourse. And they saw a very, very large increase in 2018. It more than doubled 
and remained twice as popular with female visitors compared to men. And I, I think this is a this is troubling for many, many female identified folks when they're looking for pornography. Many of them, my clients included, my friends included, have told me like, I can't find porn that actually features things that I'm interested in. I can't find porn that doesn't have a cum shot in it. So oftentimes they will search for things that are pornography that's based in romance, or they'll search for erotica or things like that. More and more, we're getting more and more resources for really wonderful, ethically made pornography that's not just focused with the primary lens being the male lens. I can talk more about that at some some other episode, but I think it's important to note here that more and more women are being more and more honest about what they're looking for in pornography, and I think that's a really important trend to pay attention to. Also, the interest of the outdoor porn grew in 2018, and I think this is a very fascinating statistic. It basically noted that the number of uploads tagged as being filmed outdoors nearly tripled. And so I think that's that's a very interesting trend that people are looking for pornography that features the outdoors. Searches for tattoos grew significantly all throughout this year, at least as Pornhub reports. It mirrors the increase in popularity reported among millennials and young professionals. Pornhub's tattooed women category grew in popularity by 88% compared to 2017. So basically, they're saying that based on their numbers from 2017, this category was searched that much more. So tattooed women in particular has seen an increase. Overall, these numbers, are I, I think it's very, very fascinating. They do actually talk about the Bowsette thing, and I'm, I do want to include that because I think it is an interesting statistic that we are looking more and more for art to imitate life. So eventually, porn imitates everything, right? So perhaps it's no surprise, that's what Pornhub says, that to see that Bowsette also made our list of searches that defined 2018 after the original Nintendo fan art went viral. Searches for Bowsette exceeded 3 million in just one week and resulted in the release of a live-action Bowsette-themed porn parody with more than 720,000 views. So I think this is an interesting thing that we, because of the internet, we have access to more and more and more things, any kind of educational tool you can think of, and any kind of porn you could think of. And it includes any Nintendo fan-themed porn. So 2018 most searched terms. And I think this is really, really helpful in that there is a ton of terms in here. This tells you how diverse our sexual fantasies are. Our fantasies are not typically just one thing. They're typically not just like one woman, one man, just missionary position. That's not what we're looking for. So the most searched term is 2018. The number one term is the lesbian. That's an interesting term, and I think that there there has been some kind of surmising about why that is. Many female people that I have talked to about this have talked very, very seriously about that lesbian porn will often have more elements to it that are more romantic than other elements. It doesn't mean always. It doesn't mean to everyone. But that may be contributing to the popularity. Hentai is number two. So for those of you who are not familiar with hentai, it's a, a form of animation porn. And it can feature lots of different things, including tentacles. <laughs> MILF is number two. Three, MILF is, for those of you who do not know, mom, I would like to fuck, essentially. So basically, people are looking for MILF's MILF porn because it it usually holds a certain age group, anywhere from people from their 30s, 40s, and 50s. The next one is stepmom. I'm seeing it definitely a rise, and I've seen a rise in at least the things I've seen online of this kind of border of, like, I guess fetishizing the stepmom role and maybe even light types of incest porn. I've seen incest porn that is that has been put into this category. The fifth most popular is Japanese, sixth mom, seventh teen, 
eighth Asian, ninth massage, tenth Korean, eleventh ebony, twelfth anal, and then it continues from there. There's quite a few. I encourage you to look at this if you get an opportunity because it it does show a very, very clear graph. And it also tells you the rank change from the previous year, which is really interesting. So we have a varied taste in fantasy. And because we have a varied taste in fantasy, we have a varied taste in pornography. And I think these numbers basically express that. If you were to, you know, take the 30,000 foot view of this data, the biggest take away from it is that, one, we're all fantasizing about very similar things. Two, that we're all very diverse in our fantasies. <laughs> and just the sheer number of us that are looking for pornography in the world. I just would love for you to take a look at this. 2018 year in review from Pornhub. There is so many takeaways from it. They talk about like the most searched female porn stars and male porn stars. And they also very, very interestingly break it down by countries. So they break it down by 20 countries by the sheer number of traffic that they get. So big surprise, (laughs) sarcasm included, the United States has the largest traffic of pornography. The second is the United Kingdom. The third is India. The fourth is Japan. The fifth is Canada. The sixth is France, and so on. I mean, just based on sheer number of people in these different countries, this makes sense that how many people have access to pornography. The largest rank changes, which I think is interesting, are Kazakhstan, Syria, Cuba, Colombia, Chechnya, and Turkey. There's some things that we don't know about this data. I mean, it could just be sheer access as to why some people are now able to at least see porn or that maybe their countries blocked it before. So there's information we're missing here. But it's really, really interesting to see how that looks across the world and how much traffic across the world is available. I mean, just the the sheer number of data that's available to Pornhub. And there's a very large infograph further down that's time spent per visit. And I think this is interesting to talk about, honestly. And I'll kind of wrap up with this because I think this is a really, it's really important to understand that most people are not spending hours and hours and hours on porn websites. Most people, their average visit, and they they calculated this, is 10 minutes and 13 seconds. So that is the average duration of a visit. It's up about 14 seconds. But that is the increase from 2017 to 2018. 10 minutes and 13 seconds. That is not a very long length of time. And so what does that tell us? What does that length of time tell us? The average amount of time that we are taking looking at porn? We're using it to masturbate, more than likely. That is what we're using it for. And that once we're done masturbating, we typically turn it off. So oftentimes I I encounter people who are very concerned about their porn use. And it doesn't mean that people can't have like some very serious compulsive issues with porn. But the average person is typically using it to masturbate and they move on with their day. So I say that and I just, I, I want to wrap up with that to let you know that a lot of us out here are masturbating. A lot of us out here are using porn to do it. And that if you are using porn and you're doing it that quickly, that more than likely you don't have an issue with porn. <laughs> so All that being said, I would love for you to all go check out the Pornhub Insights of 2018. I will put a link to it in the show notes so that you can take a look at it. Again, there's no pornography on it, so you can safely view it. There's lots of data porn on it, lots of charts, lots of graphs, uh, things nerds like me get excited about. (laughs) 
So if you have any questions or you would love to make a comment, check out. Um, I, I do have an Instagram, Erica Miley Therapy. You can find me on Instagram that way. Check out my website, ericamiley.com, or you can shoot me an email, erica at ericamiley.com. I'd love to have you. This is the 40th episode. Yay, we got it to 40. I can't wait till I'm saying it. We're to the 100th episode. Thank you all for sticking around. I will see you next time. Thanks for listening, folks. Please rate and review on iTunes. That helps this podcast get found. If you leave a five-star review, let me know about it on any social media, and I'll shout you out on the podcast. You can find my website at ericamiley.com. You can find me on Facebook, the gram, and Twitter. See y'all next time.